Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 Movie Thoughts I quite liked the military bow and the, the hawkeye arrows and, and such and the, the uniform that Cinna designed, which is just plain badass. Yeah, the the whole yeah that was that was very very fun and and this the image of Gale and Katniss these two experienced hunters young but experienced shooting down bombers you know they they've shot down countless you know birds in over the years this is a slightly bigger bird and they need to use you know arrows with explosive tips but yeah this this image of two hunters shooting down a plane you know very that's that's guerrilla combat right there you know it's the the capital can't send anything no matter how big and how powerful that can't be taken out by you know ingenuity and defiance and courage I quite like the whole idea of District 13 with this sort of mutually assured destruction kind of thing. It's, you know, it's it's sort of, it's, it's maybe more, maybe more clear in, in the book, but this thing of basically District 13 was underground and had, you know, like nukes or something and could easily attack the capital if the capital, you know, pressed the issue, so yeah, they both kind of agreed. Well, District 13 is gone, and then only with the events of the second movie did it, you know, yeah, did, did District 13 sort of show that it still existed, and this this whole thing of you know the the kind of the Cold War if it didn't end up solved by, you know, money problems. But if if there was actually if the Cold War heated up is is basically what's what's going on here. That's that's quite good. I like the the way you know the the you kind of see how the, the military people here how the them being so militaristic is sometimes you know too much. Now, and in general, the the I already mentioned them shooting down the the bombers. In general, that whole scene in District Eight was, you know, very compelling in the book as well. And yeah, it's again, it it really highlights just how vicious. Snow is and the the dictatorship in general, and I, I thought it was a, a fine change here. That, if I recall, in the book, basically it said that it didn't seem like it was actually because Katniss was spotted there. They were already going to bomb the hospital, and here it's kind of you know well we don't know if she's still there, but she might be, so bomb it, and. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a, a good kind of it, it makes the movies make the the battle between Katniss and Snow more personal. And also here we have them talking to each other and it's it's quite nice. If I recall, the things she says to Snow in the book, those are just like inner monologues or something along those lines, which right from the start, these movies have chosen not to have a 
you know, an inner monologue and a narration. And I think that's quite good. I quite like they they visualized a lot of the things that were in the mo inner monologues and others it just yeah turned into lines of dialogue and yeah I, it it works quite well and you also have to you know you always have to do something like that from taking something from one medium to another and the I quite like Boggs I wish he was in it more, but you know, like I say in the review, I pretty much all the characters I feel like they're too little. Maybe Katniss has enough, you know, time, but pretty much everyone else is just you know. And, and Boggs is a really cool character in the book. Now, I was a little surprised that in the book, Peter is beaten on camera and it's kind of you know there's supposed they're supposed to cut when it's ours it's basically because he doesn't quite go along with you know he breaks character a little bit and it's like you know it's there's this description in the book of he's beaten and the this white you know just clear white floor you know gets more and more blood on it and I, I think I mean, they use that very much in the trailers. We see several of the trailers with Snow sitting in his white coat with the white background, and PETA in a white suit with the white background floor. From that, I expected that they would stick to that. I, maybe it's the PG-13 rating, I don't know, but I felt like that was a, that was a good scene. I, I am glad that they did really show just how emaciated he was on account of yeah the you know the the what's it called the the hijacking i think they called it and you know he's he's clearly yeah been been mistreated he has they have not taken care of him you know and that I was also a little surprised in in the book the first TV appearance he makes he looks fine but then you know the next time he looks much worse and Katniss kind of realizes oh wait nothing he said there was specific he could they recorded that months ago right after we you know blew the dome and you know since then he's been mistreated and they only now brought him back because they kind of had to and yeah and in this, even in that first one, he comments on things that have just happened. So it's, you know, it's clearly not used to that. I, I felt like that was, I, I think it would have been good to, to leave that in. Now, the, but, but yeah, you, you definitely do see how he's been, you know, broken by this, the, you know, the eyes and like, he's, he's clearly lost weight and just yeah and the I thought the and and that they actually did follow up on you know they they get him back and he you know he recognizes her and just grabs her by the throat and this is one of those things where the adaptation is a great thing because I mean I I heard this in the audiobook just you know days ago with excuse me basically the chap excuse me basically the chapter ends with you know she's just you know they're just barely you know making eye contact and such and he you know uh, like just grab you know yeah grabs her by the throat and that ends that chapter and then you know the next chapter starts with her coming back to and here they don't have to just go to, no, no no they can show him grow you know just grab her by the throat slam her in, and they knock over and it's just and you can tell if they don't pull him if they don't ply him off her he will kill her you know and she wakes up and he's got you know the neck you know thing and bloodshot eyes just yeah, that was that was terrifying, and I knew exactly what was coming. That was very effective. 
and I, that is one thing, I mean, the, I, I wasn't quite sure where it would end, but I think it's, it was a good choice that, basically one of the first things in this movie for, for Katniss is, I want PETA back. PETA is alive, I want him back, and I want him to be safe here. And the movie ends with him having gotten back and apparently safe, but, you know, something's wrong. And I quite like the way they cut the ending, that she wakes up and she walks and, you know, goes up to the, the room where he's restrained. And as she does, we're hearing Coin give a speech where she's basically saying that we've pretty much won. We just have, you know, it, the, the next attack is very important and it's that's pretty much, you know, it, it was a great contrast of, you know, the the war versus the cost of the war, you know, because of this conflict, Peter's, you know, a broken man and yeah, and on the other hand we have Coin you know, so, you know, ecstatic to be winning the war. It's, yeah. And the, but, but, yeah, the, I, I felt that, you know, Peter being, you know, Katniss wanting Peter back and then getting him back and then the movie ends there. I felt that added some focus, but otherwise, I, don't really feel like it was quite as focused as the other ones. And I think part of it is the structure of these. I'm, I'm going to try not to spo spoil the other ones, but the other ones, it is very much, you know, we start out in 12, then she, you know, they're, they're drafted for the games. They have to go through training and such. And then we have the games, which is also, the games make a pretty good climax. You know, and here, I think the, the choice of climax was pretty good, but here it's just, it's a lot of sort of start and stop. There's not a lot of, and, and it's also, you know, Katniss, where in the first two she's kind of being dragged by the ear and she just has to make the most of the situation she's in, in this she kind of is in control of when, you know, it's it's all up to, you know, will you be the Mockingjay and can you live up to being the Mockingjay? And, yeah, there's just, there's a lot of, you know, for the first part, it's just, she's just trying to avoid them. And I, I thought that was a, a quite nicely, you know, she's like found away from where she's supposed to be. And she's like, can I just find more? Just find, and, and they pull her out, you know. It's, I'm not sure there's a scene quite like that in the book, but in the book it is described that she, you know, she tries to hide away from them sometimes, and they're really strict about where you are at what time and, and stuff like that. It was, it was a good, quick, you know, illustration of that. But, yeah, the, yeah, for, for the first bit, she's not even sure she can be the Mockingjay. Then she agrees to be it, but then we have this, you know, her stumbling through being, you know, the, the propos, filming, and yeah, it's just, it doesn't quite have the, the set, it's in the, in the games themselves, it's also, you know, okay, now we're training, that, that has a very clear start and end and a, and a clear goal. And once the games themselves begin, again, very clear goal and kind of, and we can tell if she's doing well, you might say. This, this has more of a war going on, and we're not seeing everything in the war. And we're, we're not supposed to, because that it's about Katniss. It's about Katniss, Peeta, Gale, and Snow. And... Yeah, there's, there's, you know, so, so some of the things we see, we see Snow being, you know, affected by how the war is going, how the, how well the rebels are doing, and yeah, s s things about how it affects, you know, the, the love triangle. But that's, that's about it. There's no, yeah, there's, 
it's it has a different structure at least and I feel like it works better as a book than as a movie but again I I haven't read the the second half of the book and I you know so I have no idea what the second half of the movie you know the part two movie will be so maybe it will turn out to have been a good idea but yeah the I quite like the use of the morbid song and I mean this wasn't the first time that I heard Jennifer Lawrence sing but she really she can sing I mean I, I guess they probably had her like you know in the in the original audition they probably had to I mean if they if they read the books they would know she had to sing this you know morbid little song and yeah I, I really like the way it's used that you know first she just sings and, and Eldon Henson with the with the sign language why was he not in the movie more why there is never not Eldon, Hens, Eldon Henson but but yeah you know she she sings and the, the Mockingjay is gone the, the bit the, oh great now they'll never shut up but but you know then the the rebels are sort of you know more determined and yeah the the I mean I, I mentioned the review that these two action scenes they added are very clearly added I say it's especially the one with the trees you know it it's a good scene it's a well done action scene and it says a lot it's it's but it really didn't need to be there but I mean I going over the good stuff it shows that they're organized it shows that they that these dozens of you know woodmen in this instance can take out I don't know maybe about a dozen of the peacekeepers and sure they they lose some themselves but they take out these peacekeepers so it's it's kind of you know if it's a war of attrition then the rebels are gonna win because the capital only has so many you know there there are far more civilians in the district than there are peacekeepers and it's you know yeah the 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 way it's you know it's clearly planned out they have the the marking on the tree and then he whistles to let them know it's now and yeah the the whole thing and I really like how both of them also show it's not that these the people from the districts are like invulnerable no 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 they die but there are enough of them that they still accomplish what they were trying to do and I also feel like this wasn't a bad case of PG-13 violence I feel like it got you know it it felt genuine enough I, I don't know I guess all these people you know falling over dying I mean you know when you talk bad PG-13 I mean the 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 Dark Knight Rising rises with the with the near the climax yeah that's bad PG-13 violence I feel like in this one they they did it well it's maybe because it's it looks violent as they're being shot not not no blood but the way they you know they they look like they are being shot you know they look like they are recoiling from the force of bullets and yeah the yeah the the tree one really just shows that yeah it it just shows that they they are taking out these peacekeepers the one with the water power plant actually goes into you know the the rescue attempt on PETA so that's but as far as I recall in the book there isn't really or at least it's not seen I, I don't remember exactly that part but yeah it's and it's again it's it's a good scene you know all these people charging at them and eventually there's just I love the image excuse me eventually they do get through I love the image of just a few of these random civilians just grabbing and fighting these 
peacekeepers because they are so monolithic. They they are just these soulless, you know, we no longer see their faces. They, you know, they dress in all white and they have this big, you know, shield in front of the face. They, you know, they don't look human and when they're they're standing and gunning people down, it's just yeah, it's it's like Part, pieces of the machine, man, and then once they're grabbed and, you know, pulled down, that makes them very human and very vulnerable, and suddenly the capital doesn't seem all that powerful anymore. That was very nicely done. Now, the... I was... I really like that Buttercup is is still. I mean, I. There's a lot less about Buttercup in the first two, than in their books, but in this they really do get a lot. You know, with with Buttercup, it's it's, it's priceless that that you know actually survive. You know, like like she says, figures. You know, and I I did think that I don't know. It's maybe again of thing of mediums and the book literally opens with Katniss in District 12 and that's just you know and and almost immediately she you know she walks and she sees that skull and you know just yeah that was really effective I almost kinda wish they had done that in the movie but I can kind of see it's really smart to open with her kind of shell-shocked and just trying to you know, just trying to make sense of what's going on. And, you know, the, the military people just pull her away. And then we see this, you know, again, be breaking the first-person perspective from the books with scenes that Katniss aren't a part of, with Coin and Plutarch discussing about Katniss. And then we get this thing of, well, take her to 12 and then you know we get that scene I yeah that was it's a good way to flesh out the the characters of Plutarch and coin and to show their relationship now the but but yeah the buttercup I really you know and she stuffs you know the cat in the in the bag and it's you know and and puts the piece of, yeah yeah it's you know I feel so bad for you <laughs> and the you know and and prim goes up for the stupid cat you know and and Gale saves her you know because he knew that prim would go for the cat and then you know Katniss uses the the flashlight to drive the cat wild and yeah it was I'm glad that they kept pretty much everything about Buttercup in this one. Now, I, let me think. The I like that the rescue attempt on Peta was made visual. In in the book, you kind of just hear, okay, they're they're going on it, and then. You know, you hear them coming back, and you know, Katniss is anxious while waiting. But yeah, we actually get to see much of it, and yeah, the the image of these guys, you know, roping down into and with with the gear on, that was not something I thought I was gonna see in a Hunger Games movie. But yeah, it was it was pretty good. It was a nice tense and surprising scene. You know, suddenly the power comes back on, and yeah, I thought that you know when I was listening through the book and I knew okay this is about the halfway point. I was kind of you know I was trying to pinpoint where would they maybe you know where would they cut it and I wondered if they would li excuse me, literally cut with excuse me, Peter grabbing Katniss's throat and just smash cut to black 
you know, end of part one right there, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad they didn't. That would really have been, <laughs> yeah. And I, and, and, you know, listening through, I, I also, I listened a little further than the movie went, just, you know, in part because I didn't know, and I was also trying to err on the side of caution. I was, you know, so, so I did hear the, you know, in, in the movie, I'm not sure she uses the word, the, she calls it the nut, but she talks about this installation in District 2 with, you know, and in the book that is referred to as the nut. And I was wondering if it would end with them planning how to bust the nut, them actually going and, you know, dealing with the nut, I, I, I wasn't entirely sure where that, but I, the way this ends, I feel like the, yeah, the, the deal with the nut will be pretty much the opening of the next one, and that's gonna be badass, that's a really good choice for, that's, that's gonna, you know, people are gonna sit there and, you know, just grumpy that they had to wait a whole year for the fall and then that happens and then they're gonna forget that they had to wait a whole year now I I quite liked the you know in in catching fire we see snow's granddaughter with you know and he asked why do you have your hair like that and she says everyone has their hair like this and you know it's very clearly the you know it's like Katniss's and then in this one, when he talks to, you know, the whole country and says everyone, you know, using the Mockingjay symbol will be executed. And we see her standing off there and she kind of touches the hair and looks and is like, would he actually do that to me? You know, and it's as that's very effective. And I I did not see that coming when I watched the second one. But that was a really good callback. That was a nice building on there. Again, I'm not sure the books mention Snow having family at all, but you know, it makes perfect sense that he has. And yeah, he spends time, time with his granddaughter. And yeah, that was a really nice use of it. I, I did want to say about the, the action scene with the loggers, I thought it was a great way to include more of this, you know, dictator actions. The, the, you know, we briefly get a description of they have to produce more. They have less, like, less time off, I think it is. And there is, you know, it will not, not living up to the quote, quota will not be tolerated. And that's, yeah, that is textbook dictatorship. You know, suddenly, nope, we have to, we have to have more, but we can't have more. Nope, but that's, that's what the guy says. And he's, he's in charge, so we just have to. And with that, you know, you have this thing of, well, you know, how, how do you get loggers to work? How do you get people to work harder? Well, put, you know, tr train guns on them. And you have these armed guards following them and, well, what can you do when you have, you know, all these armed guards around you? Well, you can attack them. So, yeah, Snow is, you know, Snow just gave them some easy picks for, you know, of, of peacekeepers. And, I mean, some of them die as well. And they, you know, and obviously that's tragic. But, the you know, the net result is they killed a bunch of peacekeepers that you know the news of that may spread to other districts as well and just and and the early on in the movie we see several being executed for the you know for rebelling and that was also a very good idea and it's kind of in the second one we have a little bit of that but in this one it's sort of made bigger the you know and and that's right off the yeah i mean yeah in in the end the ending of the second one tells us that D, district 12 was firebombed and with that the the fight 
becomes much bigger, the scope becomes much bigger, and that is, you know, here that is followed up by more people are being executed, and more peacekeepers are around, and yeah, they, they kill a lot more, you know, rebels in this one. Now, I suppose that more or less covers it. I like that there was more of President Snow in this one. You know, the, for example, the direct conversation between Katniss and Snow near the very ending was very nicely done. And it's this thing of, again, it didn't happen in the book, I'm pretty sure, but it's good to have in a movie, to have this, you know, it's basically just the two of them, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's pretty much just the, the, the two of them, their faces staring intently at each other, and, you know, I mean, Snow with this, hatred and fury and Katniss, you know, with just the righteousness and yeah, it's very, very nicely done and, you know, obviously just the, the acting is amazing and is really what sells it and yeah, it's, it's a great, you know, the movies need scenes like that, visual stuff and yeah the the battle between the two of them is very compelling and a big part of what we want from the series now i suppose that i also want to mention i thought it was very nice the I, you know, it's it's very relevant. Th this depiction of military mi militarization of the police force, with you know, yeah, that happening in America as well. So, yeah, very, very relevant, very bold. I suppose. Pretty much covers it. Yes. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.